All right, so yesterday we didn't have time to go over the lab and I feel like it's, it was better for like for everybody to, to have a video um, that's gonna help you guys to go through the lab uh, for these labs um, steps. So pretty much for this uh, week, we have something really interesting to learn. Um, as I told you yesterday, the way we run experiments in networking is, you know, you have many options. You can have your own computers connected to each other, but also you can use other technologies or other tools that allows you to, uh, you know, have like big topologies or to run uh, any kinds of experiments. So I guess um, let's get started and um, go through the through the document. Um, yeah, so mainly um, I'm going to walk you through uh, the lab. And this is basically you're going to be learning about Mininet. So Mininet is a network emulator that you can install in your computer and you can pretty much run any networking experiment in using your computer. So Mininet is a tool that you install in your computer and then you can use it to run your experiments. Um, you can have a small topologies or you can have like huge topologies as well. And yeah, so in this particular uh, activity, lab activity, we are gonna learn two main things. We are gonna have uh, some quality of service configuration and load balancing as well. And we are gonna use software defined networking for doing that. Um, and all of this, we're gonna be running with Mininet. So basically these two things, this quality of service configuration and load balancing, they are traffic engineering experiments and Pretty much, I feel like it's something really interesting and fun to do. Uh, personally, I really enjoyed um, working in this lab. I learned a lot, and I feel like I can just start testing stuff by myself. It's just like a starting point that you guys can learn, and then you can start running experiments by yourself. Um, you have, as always, the purpose of the lab uh, that I already told you. Um, have these two, um, you know, engineering experiments. Traffic engineering experiments, learning about quality of service, load balancing, using Mininet, and using uh, software defined networking to, to do these two traffic engineering experiments. Um, basically, you have some references as usual. Uh, all these labs can give you like an overall idea of all the terminologies that we are going to be using through, throughout this lab, all the tools are going to be that we are going to be installing, um, specifically uh, the two main things that. We need to know today is how to install Mininet, go over Mininet uh, in the sense of having it installed well and also um, installing all the other tools that we need to run the experiments. So we have these steps and how we are going to be collecting um, outputs from our experiments. So if we follow these steps, pretty much it's very straightforward. Um, we first install Minnet, then we work on something called a flood-like open flow controller. We do some configurations for the quality of service. We do some experimentation for the quality of service using iperf tool. After that, we move to the open flow uh, flood-like controller uh, installation. And you might be wondering why we have to install twice. So I'm gonna be, uh, I, you might be wondering that, but I will explain why we do that when we when we get to this point. Then we have some load balancing um, configuration that we do in the controller application. And then as well, we have some experimentations. Um, after we, we go through these steps, uh, I feel like the, the answers that you have the, to give us after you finish the lab, they're gonna be done because it's pretty much we're asking you things uh, in every step that you do, um, you you're gonna have, you're gonna have output. So, if you follow the instructions here and you go over all the steps, you have pretty much the questions answered. Um, we are explaining here a little bit what is going on in the figures, figure one and figure two, and yeah. So the first step here is to install Mininet, and for Mininet we need to have a Linux based computer. So that's the best way to do it. And I give you again here some options. In particular, I give you um, a hyper hypervisor option, Mac and Windows users. You both, of, uh, both of you have to install this virtual machine in your computers. Um, I have currently a MacBook 
April 2020 M1. Um, so what I did was I installed the, the VMware Fusion version and it, it was like a personal use, a free license. They also give you an option to install like something for the trial of 30 days, which is something you have to, you can do as well. But I feel like if you want to have something free and get advantage of your, you know, have, being a student and getting um, this software like for free, I guess like you can just create an account and then just follow the instructions here to download the software and then they give you a license. So that's what I did. And that's why I have um, the VMware Fusion for my, for my computer. For Windows users, the same. They also have like a personal a license that you can use. Um, I also recommend you to, to use this one. I personally also test, uh, tested this lab using VirtualBox, but for some reason it was very slow. So the only one that it worked for me at least is this uh, a workstation. So if you can install this, um, that would be awesome because like all the screenshots that I use in, in this lab for the examples, I got them for there. So if you want to have something similar or exactly the same, I recommend you installing this uh, a virtualization software. Um, yeah, so also for the newer versions of Mac, I have to tell you that I have tested as well. So it worked well. The VMware version uh, for Mac users, it worked. Um, I asked someone for the lab to help me test that. So um, yeah, so you don't you're not gonna have any issues when installing um, the, the workstation in your computers. So if you have a newer Mac, com Mac computer, this should be good, um, yeah. So after you have your uh, virtual virtual uh, virtualization software, what you're gonna do is you're gonna install or you need to download basically uh, Ubuntu machine or an Ubuntu uh, image. And the reason I'm putting here uh, this link is because um, in case you want to install the same version that I have, personally, I try with the newer uh, Ubuntu version, the 2204. And I have a lot of um, issues, especially with the extensions and like a lot of tools that are deprecated already. I also have issues with the Python version. Um, if you know how to change between Python 2 and Python 3 to run experiments, go for it. Uh, if you don't have experience, I think the easiest way to go for it is to try to install an older version of Ubuntu. And you don't have to worry about uh, fixing all those issues. Um, so I put the link here. Uh, you go to this link and then you have like a lot of Ubuntu uh, versions. So the one that I installed in my computer is this one. So you just search for it. You download and then uh, you install that in your virtual machine. So this is one I have currently and it's the one that I use for the lab. So if you want to have something like exactly the same of what I'm going to be running, I recommend you to use this a link here and download this software. All right, so after you have everything installed, you have your VMware installed, and then you have your virtual machine installed, and you have everything ready to go, we're gonna start with the lab. And the first step is to install mainnet. Um, and I try to put the links here that I follow, like exactly the same. If you want to also like learn more about Mininet and you want to learn more about like other ways to install it, you are also welcome to do that. I put the the website, the Mininet, Mininet website. So you just go to Mininet.org and there is a bunch of documentation here, what you can use for, um, how you can create an experiment, a, a walkthrough um, step by step. Um, and then if you go to download here, uh, they give you like different options of you know how to install. So pretty much 
what I've just told you about the VM installation and you know the virtualization systems and stuff, I already like gave you like instead of being like very like detailed, I might say I just put the most important things here, like in law in less uh, steps. But of course, if you want to go over here and read in detail and go through like everything, you're also welcome to do that. Um, Basically, I, I put the option that we are using uh, some of the steps to download the software in our computers and then we install it. So pretty much uh, you install like certain tools to do that. You clone the Minnet folder and then what you do is you install everything. So this is for installing everything. Again, if you want to know like other ways to install or if you want to you know install certain things about meaning it that you you don't want to install everything so you need to go over this um, documentation and learn more about like other options to install and what other tools you can install um, there are many ways that you can install as they give you here like different options but i feel like this is the easiest way um again i just put this a extra command line here in case there are like students who are not using like the same version of Ubuntu here. So you might have some issues in here when you're trying to install everything. So this is another way to install Mininet. Um, so you might have to try this, but in that case, you might need to install as well other network tools. So you just uh, go over, um, the details that I'm putting here for you and be like very specific in reading, like like in detail what uh, what we are doing here. Like for example, don't just, as I told you before in the previous lab, don't just go and try to run everything line by line without really understanding what is going on behind, right? So you might get like an issue or you might get in trouble if you don't read what it says here and then you just go everything running and then this one it didn't work for you. So you just, run this one, this one, and just can create some trouble there. So I might suggest going over here and then you just run this in case it, it fails. So if you get to this point and everything is running up and running, you didn't get any issue. So then you don't have to run this too because when you do this, is this already installed? So um, please read very well. Like if I put you some notes here, then just, like you know run all the command lines without really knowing what is going on behind and again like these small things like this if you want to know more what it means you go like over the command lines here and you can find more details on it so since i have already installed uh, mini nets in my computer in my vm i'm going to show you uh it's going to take you around i might say five five minutes max to install everything. So as you may see, I'm working in a VM, a Linux machine, and I have the Mininet folder here already. I follow the instructions that I put you in the lab. So if I go to the Mininet folder and then I go to utils, as it tells me here, uh, I will be able to see this command line here. And this is what I'm, doing to install everything. So pretty much um, you might know, but in case you don't know, the ones that are, the files that are in green, they are executables. So the blue ones, uh, you can make, a, you can do a research to know what are the blue ones, but there is a difference between this one that is just like regular. And then this is blue and this is green. So I know what it is, but I feel like it's always, at least for me, that works that if I see something that I don't know and I just search it by myself, I will never forget it. So that might work for you too, because if I just tell you now, you might forget it again. So I I welcome you to go and Google and ask Google uh, what it means when you have a file. When you do LS and you list all the files that you have in a folder, what it means you have like a green, you know, I already told you it's an executable, but what it means you have a like a blue color or like just a regular name. So 
yeah, so that's what we do here pretty much. This is the same screenshot um, after we run this. So what we are doing here is we are doing some, I can go back, we are doing some connectivity testing. And then since I'm not like in a um, super user, what I have to do is I always have to put my, um, my password. So what it's doing here is it's pretty much creating the network, it's adding hosts, switches, the links between the hosts and the switches, and then it's doing some connectivity testing. So that's what we have here in the screenshot. And we also need to know like, well, I'm always curious and I want to know like, what is the version of the mini-net that I'm just installed? So let's try to, uh, to get that. So MN is always for mini-net. So I want to know the version and this is the version that we are currently installing. So if you search for this in the documentation, let me see if I can go back here. It's gonna be easier. No, I don't have that. Yeah, so these are also the versions that you can uh, have for Mininet. But the cool part is um, in here. Yeah, so the version that we to install, which is like uh, 2.3 point something, which is, yeah, this one. Uh, so you can see here, it supports Python 3 and 2. So that's kind of the cool part. And that's why I wanted you to install like that version because you shouldn't have any issues in case you install in a earlier or in a newer Ubuntu version. Like for example, in the 2204, you might need to install the like a ready version of Mininet because, and then you're gonna have two versions of Python, but then you have to do some um, virtualization again and change from Python 2 to Python 3, in case you wanna play a little bit with that as well, you're also welcome to do. But for our case, you're using this version because it's the newer one. And it works for us as well with this version of uh, Ubuntu, so. Uh, all right, so let's just clean up this one and go back to the documentation. We already have this done. And then after we have Mininet installed, what we are gonna do is we're gonna install suit like OpenFlow controller. So again, there are very like different flavors or open flow controllers that you can find out there. Um, in, this particular in this particular lab, we are gonna learn about the flute line one. And again, it's available for different environments. Um, we are gonna be using a Java based flute line controller. And we have the architecture for that uh, in these figures here. Um, and we are using this pretty much to configure and we do some management for our network topology. And we do that for the open flow switches and then hosts that we are gonna have in our uh, experiments. So there are many things here that uh, you can take a look in, like in detail. These are the APIs that we are gonna be using since it's the flood light controller that we are gonna install. So you can read in detail. Uh, you also have here the link. Uh, that we provided if you want to read more about it. Uh, we also provide here um, on how the flow leg is going to be interacting with, you know, your applications and, you know, the hypervisor and your OpenFlow um, installation. So you have the OpenFlow uh, controller float like here, and it's like interacting and connecting with your application and your data plane interface. Um, you have here some details about how exactly this works but again you can read more about it in detail and what it means what it means to have this interaction here so you might have another controller here but in this particular case is the float light one that we are using in this in this lab we move on and then we start with the installation process so for doing this we need some dependencies we need to update our computer we need to install uh, apache and in JDK, uh, that in case it's not re already installed, we are going to install it. So if you follow the instructions here, you run the update uh, sudo installation command line, you install ant, and then after that, you install open uh, the 8 version of um, 
the Java version that we need. So uh, in particular, it's the 1.8.0, but uh, the point is if you install and it's gonna probably install for you like a newer one. And that's something that we don't need. So if you install like the JDK 11, it might not work. So we give you like a trick here that you can follow. So we can have the specific version that we, we need. Um, this uh, particular trick you can also use for like changing between Python 2 and Python 3, but I'm not covering that in this particular lab since it's not something very critical. But uh, in this case, it's very, very important to have a specific Java version. So um, we have to make sure the version is this version. So I did this as well in my computer, my virtual machine. So let's just run it again. So this is the command line to see what version of Java I have is this one. So as you can see, it's exactly the version that we need. So we are good. So the thing is, if you go over the, the points here, all the lines one by one, um, when you run this command line, you might not get this. So you might get another version, the 11 one. So we don't need that. So what happened is to do that, you have to run this, um, pretty much you update on alternatives and you can configure the version of the Java that you need. So I put some explanation here that what happens if you just installed and before, and this one have might have automatically installed the 11 version and that supersedes the one that we need, which is the version eight. So to change that, if you run this experiment, this, this uh, command line, you're gonna see what are the versions of Java that you currently have. So in my case, I have number two here selected, so it's fine. But primarily, if you do this initially, you might have here this version, the 11 version, this one. So you might need to, to uh, point out here number two. And then after that, you're going to have the version that you need. So if we go back to the version of Java, and it's currently the, the one that we need. But initially, if you run this for the first time, you are going to have here the 11 version. So then you run this link this command line, and then you choose number two, which is the one that we want. And then you run back Java version and you're gonna have the version that we need. So I put here the screenshot that where it's gonna happen when you run this uh, command line and what you have to do to change. Um, after we have the Java version that we need, we move on a little bit more and then we, we start installing uh, Python and Coral. So here is when things get a little bit tricky because if you have like a newer Ubuntu version, you, this is probably something that is not gonna work for you. So there are many other options to install, like for example, like the same, the same uh, command line, but then you have to put like a specific version of Python that you want. But personally, this one, it didn't work for me. If, when I tried with my uh, Ubuntu 22 port. So this is something that it worked for me with this event version. So if you wanna use this one, uh, I recommend it. Um, then we finally, after we have the Java version and we have, you know, the, um, I might say the dependencies that we need to run Flood like we are gonna install Flood like And we are gonna, again, download this um, repository and we are using this one in particular, because this uh, repository has the quality of service um, that we need to run. So that's why we are um, downloading this particular folder. And that we are doing is, if I go here to my um, home directory, I have the Floodlight folder already here because I already, uh, I have already downloaded. So I have what I need. And again, we have a, another executable here that we need to execute to run the experiment or to what I'm saying, to, to uh, install everything that we need. Um, we enter uh, the, the folder as we did here. And then what we are doing here is we are building the controller. So if you run this, 
here it should build everything again and you have to have this um, build successful message here so that means your controller is running uh, you're building the controller that you need to uh, use for for flute light so basically after you have the build successful uh, command or message here. So that means you're good. The way you uh, run and here the Apache and dependency, you can use just like this. Or if you are in your root user, you just need to run and another way that I've seen people run it is using a semicolon here. Uh, uh, what is it? This one. Uh, I don't have a semicolon. Yeah, that one, as you can see here. Um, so it depends if you run this way, as I just show you here, it should work. We may, we move a little bit more here. Uh, we have the dependency build, so we should be um ready to go. Um, some of the specifications that we need to do here in terms of um, you know, generating a, um, a file that we need for installing Plutlight in our computers. There are certain adjustments that we need to do with the parameters, uh, depending on the machine types that we are using. So in this particular case, since I'm using a, a you know, a server parameter that is um, 64, I don't need to change anything, but in case you have like a G4 um, image that supports only D32, you're gonna have some issues. And for doing that, uh, fixing that, we need to make some changes in the plot like a executable. So you can use any, any editor for your, any text file editor to open this file, this executable. But I personally like Beam because it's like, it gives you like nice colors and it's, it's easy to follow and to find exactly the line that you need. With V, it works too, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I recommend you to install uh, Veeam first and then use Veeam for uh, open up the, the file. So in this case, since my computer is 64, I don't need to change it. So I just put here, if your virtual machine supports 64, you don't need to change it. And if you use the same VM that I'm using, so you probably, you don't need to change it as well. So it's just to give an example to someone that has, I don't know, there might be someone that has this, so a, this computer. So in that case, you're gonna have an issue. So you have to change this based on the type, the machine image that you have. Um, I highlighted here as well. Let me try to open it. So you know what I'm talking about, which one is the file that I'm talking about. So this is the file. So this is just the line that you have to change. And in my case, I don't change it because my machine is D64 and it supports D64. So I don't have to change it. So I just keep it in the way it is. Um, the same thing that I highlight in here is the same thing that I'm showing you here. Then we move up a little bit more and just giving you some explanation here. And I kept this screenshot here because um, I wanted to give you an example of what kind of error you're gonna get if you have a 32-bit computer and the Java version is not gonna work. So if you try to execute the fluid like command line, just all everything, it's not gonna work for you and you're gonna have this issue. So I kept this screenshot from previous years um, to show you what is gonna happen. Um, if you try to run blue light and you have a 32 bit um, version machine. So this is not something it was mine. So I just wanted to keep this to give you an example of what kind of error you're gonna get. Um, after that, if you try to run the flood light command line, again, you're gonna get another error. So for avoiding that error, you need to delete one of the lines from the same file. So I kept this because I don't really have that here anymore because I already deleted 
but basically it's in the line 14. So if you go to line 14 here, you are gonna have another line and it's gonna be exactly like this. And that's the one that you have to delete. So you have to delete that and then you saved. How, how do we save? So if we made some changes, you press escape, colon, a right and quit. Okay, so in this case, I didn't open it with um, sudo, so I don't have privileges to make any uh, changes. So let me try to do it in this way. Uh, but I didn't change anything anyway, so it should be fine. But in case you make a change and you didn't open with sudo privileges, you need to, um, it's not gonna allow, allow you to, to make any changes and save. So if you are um, doing it with a root user, you should be able to make changes and then save it. So you write and then you quit, enter. And then is everything ready to run um, this to start the flood like controller. So let's just copy and paste this one. Okay, let's go. Um, I just wanted to give you as well, like a, a small like comment here. Sometimes what happens is, especially if you're running, like this is not the first time you're running, you're gonna have some issues. For example, that the port that you're trying to use is already used. Most of the issues that I have seen in like in like several times that I have tried this lab is the port 98 is the one that is gonna give you some issues. So for doing that, you can, uh, I put some notes here that how you can kill the processes when you have like the port already in use. So these are like the command lines that you can use. I Googled it and I found and it worked for me. So pretty much um, you have to kill like all the processes that are running and then you put the username. So the username name is gonna be different here. It's, it's gonna be uh, your username in particular or root or any other. But this is the, the way that I, I, I fix that issue, just as a comment. Okay, so we have the controller running. Uh, so we are ready to go. Let's go back to the lab. So we have here everything, the same screenshot. After that, if you go to this uh, link, you should be able to see this. Probably if I show you now, since I have already run this experiment, uh, it's not gonna look exactly like this, but pretty much this is the UI where you can see the like UI to be more specific, where you see uh, very specific details about the experiment that you're running, like dash, you had a dashboard in general, when you have the number of switches that you have, the host, you can go to the topology, you have some specifications about the switches, hosts and tools as well. So if I open another, uh, if I have a terminal here, let me see this one. Yeah, so I have this open, by the way. So this is what you're gonna see, but you're not gonna see anything here yet. So uh, in particular, this is the, um, the screenshot that I just show you here. All right, so now we have MediNet installed. We have Flute Light controller up and running. We have everything set up to start running the experiment. So if you got to here, congratulations, you did like most of the hard work for this lab. I feel like the places where I spend most of my time to try to make things easier to follow were like the first steps to configure everything in terms of the environment that we need and to install everything. Uh, so if you got to this point, you should be good to go straight forward for the next steps. All right, so we do here the first part of the, the let's say the exercise, the experiment, and then we are doing this uh, quality configuration in controller application. Pretty much we create a network topology first. And just for consistency, and I like to be very consistent like with the things I do, um, I'm gonna be, using this, um, the, the folder that I have uh, where I installed MiniNet. So this is my home and I have this folder here. So I go to MiniNet and I have this uh, 
custom folder. So I want to do everything here. So if I'm gonna create a new topology, I might be creating another one here and saving it here. So I know where are all the topologies that I created. So it's more like for consistency. Uh, but of course you can save it any other place if you want to. Um, so we are gonna give you this file and you're gonna download it from Canvas. So this is the topology for this experiment. So we have a open floor switch topology and it's for the quality of service experimentation. We have six switches, four hosts and one controller. So as you can see, we can have this topology up and running in our computers. So the file that we give you is to run this experiment, this, this topology in particular. So I downloaded from Canvas this file and I have it in my desktop. So what I do is uh, I went, what I did was I went to my desktop folder, I may say, and then I copy the topology that just I just downloaded to my custom folder. And again, I'm not in a root privilege here, so I have to write sudo first. And then I after I put my password, I just cd to the custom folder, and then I can see the topology that I just created. Um, again, if you are, you know, uh, curious, you can go over it. It's kind of, you understand exactly what you're doing. Uh, we are gonna use this as well for like uh, some other exercises that you have to do. But if you wanna go over it now and to understand very well what is going on, I recommend you all opening the file and just going over it and understand exactly if the file that we are giving you is exactly like this. So to run this, we need to, uh, in Mininet, we need to, type this command line. So I also gonna run this. So just to give you an example. So let's do it. Um, okay, so let me use, uh, let me just clear this. And let me just run sudo mn, which is for mininet x controller. Uh, remote and then custom and then we put the path or where we have for um, a mininet on my username mininet custom the name of the file that we just copied is six and then and then my topo. That should be it. What we are doing is we are preserving this topology using this command line, and we are doing this using Mininet. So when we start here, the command line, we are saying to Mininet to create this topology for us. And then we put the command line again, and it's creating uh, the topology for us. So let's say we want to create another topology and we have another file with a different configuration and different setting. So it's gonna be the same command line, but of course not the same. So this is what the way you tell Mininet to reserve the topology for you. You might notice as well, like immediately after you click uh, enter, you see like how many hosts are created, how many switches, how many links, like the links that are connecting these switches with this host. Um, and then again, um, in the same time, it's opening up for you like all the terminals for each switch and host and the controller as well. So we can just minimize this because we don't need them right now, but we have our uh, topology in Mininet up and running. So if you get to this point and you have all the uh, terminals for each host and switch and controller, you're good. Also, immediately after you do that, you are gonna notice that your flood-like use, uh, user interface is gonna get updated. 
with the different hosts, the different switches. And you have the topology that you just created, switches, hosts. So you have everything what you need. All right, so this is what I just show you. I just put them like here, like in a very, like in a more organized way so you can see what is going on. Uh, we can do some connectivity testing as well. We just run um, in the mininet. You either we just um, got here, which has been all, and we can see that there is some testing ping and everything is reaching to each other. And we have some results here as well. We go back. If you open, this is what I just show you. You can see like the details in terms of the switches and the hosts as well. It's already updated, so pretty cool. Something that we didn't have before. You can see now up and running. Uh, we move on a little bit more and we get to this point. So in particular, what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna use the hosts that we just created here to run this experiment. So we have one, two, three, four hosts, the same ones uh, from this topology. Um, go back from this one, this one, one, two, three, and four. That's what we are using here. And then what we are gonna do is we're gonna be a, creating some I mean, say we are going to be limiting the bandwidth between uh, the different uh, rates. Uh, we have some default QA, we have like one and two as well, and then we're going to change the rates. So this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So first of all, we install Mininet. We have all the dependencies. We have Flood Light Controller up and running. We have our, um, we created our topology in Mininet. We have the topology connected to the flu light controller. Um, so everything is set. So now we are going to use a open switch commands to set the network policies. And for doing that, we will need to open this file. So we need to go to this folder. Uh, let me open another. This is the controller is still running. Uh, I don't have nothing here, so let me just clear this one and exit and go to the home directory. And let me just try to, first of all, go to this folder first to show you where is this file. So this is the file that we need to um, edit. All right, so let me just go back to here, ls, cd footlight. Q data ls, and then we have to go to apps, and then we have to go to QoS. All right, so we are in the place where we want. In which one is the file that we need? Is this mininet at QoS? This one. So this is what we need to change, basically. One way to do it is after you go to the folder and you find the file that you need to edit, you just open with vim, minnet, add, and enter. So you have the file here, open. You can also use the command line as we have here. So we copy this one, go back to the home directory, and just paste that here. I should go back to CD. Uh, uh, yeah, I should have gone to the uh, mm, like here. And then after that, yeah, I, I should go back to the to the folder to open the open the file. Uh, I think that's going to be easier even for you too, just because otherwise it's going to create another file for you and it might go to another directory and then things can just get messed up. So let me just go to the quality service folder and then let me beam to the mininet uh, keywords. And let's look for 
the place where we have to change the QS and the rates. So in here, I put you two screenshots and this is what we have originally. And you have to change it to these values. So pretty much um, after you open the file for the first time, this is what you're gonna say, uh, you're gonna see. And these are the three values that you have to change. So it might get a little bit confusing uh, in the beginning in the way it is organized. It's not really uh, well um, easy to follow, but I try to like, just to give you an idea, I highlighted here. So you're not gonna get lost or you're not gonna change anything that you are, you're, you're not supposed to change. But basically to give you an idea, the three things that you have to change are the last three things. So this is the last one. This is the last one. And this is the last one. So if you're a little bit more curious as well, you can see the IDs with the QS here. This is the number one, and this is what you change. This is the number two, and this is what you change. And this is the last uh, Q. So the other configuration one, but basically what you need to change are the number one and number two. So for me in particular, this is already changed. So this is not what you're gonna see. Uh, what you're gonna see the first time you open it is this file with these rates. Um, all right, so you have to change it as we are mentioning here, like we have to make the Q1 to 50 megabits per second and the Q2 rate limiting to 40 megabits per, per second bandwidth. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're changing two things basically. Uh, remember the last two, three, the last three things basically. Uh, okay, so the first one is uh, 2,000 millions. So for my, I have 2,000 millions. Okay, so I have three and three. So this is correct already. Then for the second one, I have 40,000. So for the second one, I have 40,000. So this is the value that I need. And for the third one, I need to have 50,000. So the third one is this one for me. So I have 50,000. So this is, these are the values that you need to do. So you choose exit. In your case, you have to write in quick. But in my case, since I have already changed the values, I choose exit. So after you change these values, what you do is you run this uh, command line. And we are gonna start configuring everything and we just change it. All right, so it would be nice. And instead of you know running the sudo first, we just go and change to uh, user to super user. So you have privileges to do or, or to run this um, command line. You paste it here, you enter. Uh, wait, 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 where I am now. Oh yeah, sorry. I just have gone to the, to the home directory. And the reason why it happened is because uh, I just put here like the command line, put in like the, I would say like the directories where you have to go to run this particular um, a executable, the one that we just changed it. So you can also like, you know, just go to this folder and then execute this file because that's what we, what we want. But in my particular case, I run it from my home directory. So if I go to home and then I go to my username, then I can use exactly like this. But again, this is just like the way I use it, but you can just go to the QoS folder and then you just run this executable to run this. So we paste here and it should work. So we have everything configured now with uh, like the changes we just made. Um, I put the screenshot here as well. So you should have something like this. Uh, and then what we are doing is we have to enable the quality of service module. And for doing that, we have to run this command line. So we just keep here, we can clean terminal and paste the same command line that we give you here and then you have this uh, connection successful 
uh, messages. So pretty much the controller, the status is success, the detail is the quality of services enabled. Um, after that, you might face some issues when you run this experiment with this file, with this quality of service manager to that PY. And for doing that, like for fixing it in particular, you have to change like some imports that you have in this file. And it might happen as well with this file. Uh, but in particular, I have an issue with this one. So you have to open your, um, if you have an issue, of course, but if you don't, you don't have to. Um, so I put here like a note, so if you face any issue, uh, you have to open this file. So how we're gonna do that? We need to go to the Fluglight data. Uh, quality of service data ls then we go to a apps let me check yes apps ls we go to quality of service ls and then which is the one that we need to change is this executable so we vim to quality of service manager two and we go to the first part of the file where we are importing stuff. Go to the first part. Let me make this one is faster here. We go to the part where we import things. Okay, go here. All right, so initially you are gonna have only JSON here. So we need to import in this way uh, for some reason and then it's gonna work. So if you have any issues and you just have import JSON here, you need to put it in this way and then you save it and then it should be ready. So that's something that I wanted to tell you as well. If you have that issue, you have to beam to the file and then you have to change that. Um, I put here like a detail and I highlight it as well. The same thing that I just show you here, I highlight it here. And then if you go back to your um, website, to the foot like um, via, via foot like UI, and then you go to tools, let me just update this. Uh, yeah, you might have this issue as well, but if you go to the file again and you um, update, you should be able to go to tools and then you see the quality of service that is true. So everything that you just run is up and running. So go to your dashboard, topology, such as host and tools. We have the quality of service uh, enabled. So this is what I'm showing you here. And then we start the real DL. So what we're doing here is we are, um, establishing some flow from the host one and two, and then we are limiting to 40 megabits per second. And we are using this command line to do that. Uh, so if you go back to um, your quality of service folder, uh, let me see if I open up this one here. We are already there actually. We need to run this command line. We can just copy it. And since I already run this, um, it tells me already like the policy already exists. But in your case, you have to get something similar to this. And then the connection successfully again by the end. It says here again, like for me, that everything is running good, but you have to check that if you already run this before, you're going to have this issue here with the policy. But if you didn't, this is the first time you're running it, then you, you're you not going to have this message here. It's going to be like this. Um, so this is the first part of experiment you're doing from host one to host two, and you're limiting the bandwidth to 40 megabits per second. And then the other one that we are asking you is to do from three to four, and you're limiting uh, the, the bandwidth from uh, with 50 megabits per second. So for doing that, you run this command line. We can clean up the terminal and we paste it. And 
it should like tell you like a lot of details here. For me, again, since I ran, I already run this, I have this policy already um, exists message here, but for you, it's not gonna show you that. It's gonna show you like this. Um, and then with the with the message that is, uh, the policy is, is written in the JSON file. So if you got to this, <clears throat> to this point, um, you should be able to run the next experiment. And this is just to verify um, the IP addresses and to know if, what are the IP addresses of the four hosts that you, you are using for this experiment. And for doing that, you run uh, this tool that is called iPerf. You might know, or you might have already used it before, I think in previous labs, you already use it, but um, we're gonna be using it again this time. So we have, a, we can minimize this for now and we can open up our um, external terminals. So we have to look for host one, host two, host three, and host four. So we need those open. So this is host two. Then we look for host three. Then we need host one and host two. A host one and host two. No, there we go. This is host one. And we need host a two. Okay, so we have host one, host two, host three, and we need uh, host four. Host four. Okay, so we have all the hosts and their terminals open. So we need to run this experiment. I always go to my home directory all the time. So you can do that or you can just keep yourself in the same directory that you already are. That's okay, because the only thing that we need to do with this is to verify the IP addresses of uh, our four hosts. So we just run iperf in each of them. So we can uh, is I, I have config to know the, the IP addresses. Oh, I just got confused. You're using I, I have config to know the IP addresses, and then you have iperf to do the connectivity testing. So Basically, what we are doing here is we pretty much uh, do IF uh, config in each a, in each terminal, and then we know the IP addresses, and this that's the information we need for this experiment. Um, all right, so for this one, the IP address in the first uh, host is going to be. Let me see if I find it. This one for the second one is this one for the third one is this one and for the fourth one is this one so it's pretty much for host one we have all one for host two we have all two for host three we have all three and for host four we have all four so just to have an idea of what are the ip addresses we go back this is exactly what i show you in the screenshots and then we do the the hyper uh, so we can create a um, server and we can start running uh, the client as well. So in the first set of experiments, we are going to open host three and host four, and then we are going to uh, run, first of all, uh, host four as server and host three as uh, client. And we are going to do some connectivity testing here. You need to make uh, screenshots of this too. And then you can take a look of what happened. And if you do this, where is this connected to? Uh, so you can go over like the details of what you got here and why you got there, like the different, like uh, how is this showing you here? Like it's connected to this uh, particular IP address is the interval in time, the transfer megabits per second, and the bandwidth. So you can check and take a look at like, like the number of transfer data, the bandwidth that we are using, and take a particular like a, take particular attention to the bandwidth because what we just created here is we were like limiting the bandwidth between the, the hosts. So you might learn why we get this why we got this bandwidth within these two, two hosts. You do the same 
with host one, host two. And again, you are doing some, uh, you are rating some, uh, you, you're creating some limitations between the network bandwidth. So if you get some measurements here between one and two, as you might remember, we limited that initially to 40 megabits per second. So you got less than that here, of course. So just uh, try to understand what is going on here and why you got these uh, results. You have to get some screenshots for this one as well. And that's pretty much all the quality of service part of the lab. And that's the first part of the lab. So if you got to this point, you have pretty much the first section all done for like the things that you have to turn out for ready. The second part, um, as I told in the beginning, why we are like downloading again, like why we have to put like folders. So let me just open, I can just close everything here now because this controller and everything else was part of the first part of the lab. So to stop the controller, you press control C and then it should show you like this, just clean. Uh, we don't need to use this meeting net anymore. So we can exit and it's gonna stop everything. It's gonna close uh, the X terms that we have open already, which is clean. Uh, we just clean here as well. We can exit as well. So we have everything clean again. Uh, so we have to clone this folder. So the reason why we have initially this uh, a beta folder here is because it has the quality of service tool that we needed. But for doing the load balancing, we don't need, we don't need that. So we just need to install or download the Fluglight version that it doesn't have the quality of service one. So if you go to Fluglight, uh, we have another folder with like the load balancing um, that we need. So you do that, um, downloading this and cloning this uh, folder from Git, well, using Git, you enter the folder and then you are using this particular version and then you're building it. We're doing quite the same thing we did, in, we did with the quality of service as well. So some of the steps here are like pretty much the same as we did in the previous one. So the steps are very similar to the section 3.2. So you edit the, the file, then if you have a, depending on your system, you're gonna be changing to the 64 or 32. If you have a 64, you keep it in the way it is. You have to remove the, the line 14th they had this equals to eight you have to remove that and then you can build your fluid light um, controller again if you open the ui um, this ui you're going to see the load balancer uh, here that is like a module that comes with uh, this installation so you already have the load balancer installed so in this case um, what we are going to do is we're going to uh, create a topology that is similar to this one. And for doing that, we are gonna just use um, Mininet. So we're gonna just run this experiment. And what we are doing is we are creating a, a tree topology and we are specifying that we need three. Uh, the way I see this is like a tree and then you have three, uh, I might say switches and different lines and then you have a eight hosts connected to each other. So this is what we are using this topology for the load balancing experiment. So if you run this in your terminal, we just exit here and clean this one and just run this one. It's gonna create that topology for me. So we have the number of hosts, we have eight hosts, we have seven switches in the links to this is link one, link two, link three, and so on. So these are like the links between the switches and the links between the switches and the hosts. Um, and then we do this connectivity testing again to see if everything is connected to each other. So we run ping all and uh, what are it? Oh, it's kind of slow. So let me see. Let's see if I can 
Let's see it in there. Just do it again. All right, so we have again, let me try that. Ding. Uh, yeah, it's very, very slow. So pretty much you have to get this uh, similar to this one, just put the screenshot here as a reference. Um, you have the load balancer experimentation and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna implement it, implement that between this host here that we established here. Um, let me see if I go back to, Exit this and then I clean back, I create back the topology. And all right, so here if we go to this um to this folder, to the floodlight folder, just open another one. And city, I go back to my home. I think I can just do it here. Go to floodlight. And then two apps. I have the file that I need. So let me try to open this. Um, yeah, so this file actually is a file that we are going to also give you. So we are telling here um, to our topology like then the IDs for each uh, connection and the IP addresses um, and how they're connected to each other in, in terms of the pool and things like that, I, in terms of the port. So we just exit this for now. And what, what we're gonna do is uh, you download this file. I have this uh, downloaded in my desktop. So I'm copying, as I show you here, I have have the load balancer a file in my desktop. So what I'm doing is I'm copying, I'm copying that into my apps folder. And again, this is just uh, because I like to have things like in, in a place where I'm gonna remember. So what I'm doing is I'm just copying um, this file that I just downloaded from Canvas to the apps folder from my floodlight uh, directory that I just downloaded. So after that, what I do is I, ex I, since I have this file, like in my case right now, I have it like an executable, but initially when I gave you or when you download it from Canvas, it's gonna be just like a file like this. So you need to, to convert that to an executable. And to do that, you have to run this, um, this command line. And after that, it's gonna get green like this. So this is already an executable. And the way you run it is you just run sudo and then the executable. And it's going to install all the rules that I just showed you before. Um, and then you have the load balancer, and that's going to be with, the, with this server, uh, with this server uh, IP address. So the one that I show you here, this is a load balancer where you install the load balancer in this particular host. And this is the IP address for this particular host that are working with the load balancer. So we get back here. After we install all the rules, what we do is we open two hosts. And this is the way you do it. You have the mininet uh, right here. So the way you do it, you type xterm host one and host two and it's gonna open two terminals. And we are gonna start ping, pinging from uh, the load balancer, which is this one. Uh, load balancer from the host one terminal, pretty much. And then how this is gonna be routing the ping on host uh, three. So if you check here, this is host one. And what you're doing is you're ping into the load balancer from host one. And as you can notice, it is uh, pinging on, as I said, it is routing the ping on host three, and this is the IP address. So this is just to have an idea of um, why initially we did this uh, IF config to know the IP addresses of each host as well, 
So this is the IP address from the host three. Uh, you need to take a screenshot of this and then we do the same thing. We ping the load balancer that has this IP address from the host two terminal. So we have to check where uh, this will route. So as you can notice here, it's routing to the host four, uh, which is pretty much what we just told uh, the load balancer to do. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what we have. If you got to this point, I feel like you have pretty much 80% done of the lab. Um, and then if you have everything done till here, what we are gonna do is we are gonna uh, create some, uh, like the screenshots that you just created in the beginning of the quality of service experiment, you will need to add that here, the two screenshots. And then from that experiment, what we are gonna do is initially we were having these two, two hosts doing the quality of experimentation scenario, but now we are gonna have another scenario. And we have some questions here for you to answer. Um, you're gonna have to make some changes to the file that we provided for the quality of service because there are gonna be, it's gonna be like a different scenario. Uh, so you have to make changes on it. And then the way you run it is pretty much the same way we just run it. Um, again, initially we have two and two here, but now we just make things a little bit more complicated. So we have in this case, six hosts and seven switches and one controller. So you need to create this topology and we're gonna have some experimentation to do. We have some questions here that you have to describe. Uh, you might need to limit the bandwidth uh, between different QoS. So try to follow what is, what is um, telling you here to do. And there are like two different command lines that you have to uh, pretty much modify from the ones that we give you here. So for doing that, you're gonna need to change. Let me go back there to show you these ones. So this is to establish the rule, the flow rule from different hosts and limits in the bandwidth. So you're gonna need to change these parameters and also um, we have another example here. So you have to change the parameters based on what we are asking you here and based on the topology that we have since it's a different topology. So you have to give us the two command lines that you use to execute these two things that we're asking you here to do. Uh, you already have these two screenshots that you just uh, run for the load balancing, balancer configuration. So it, this is already done. And then we have other questions here that are like for the load balancer script that we gave you. So you need to extend that and create a new rules and pretty much run a new load balancer experimentation. And you need to use this S3, these three details here, follow that. And you're gonna have to, um, some work to do like with different uh, hosts here. Uh, we try to give you like as much details as possible like in terms of the IP addresses and the new host. Um, so try to follow here and we have, based on the experimentation you do here, you have uh, two questions. And then you have to uh, provide to, I mean, like a single screenshot with the four ping windows that are running simultaneously. So, and that's it. I I feel like this, this lab, I really wanted to make this video because uh, I feel like it might get a little bit confusing, um, but I tried to be as detailed as possible to give you like all the information based on what I have run like in different VM versions. Like I try to make things less complicated in the sense of what kind of um, Ubuntu you, you might need to install to make things like exactly like mine, um, how to install Mininet. Um, and yeah, and I feel like it's like a fun exercise that you, you're gonna go and work for it. Um, yeah, so that's it, and I will be posting this now and make the assignment available. Thank you.